Thank you, Steve. Um, as Steve mentioned, I'm going to be talking today about the person as sacred text. So to begin with, I want to point out that in English we have a number of idioms that uh, refer to people as metaphorical books. We have expressions like, you can't judge a book by its cover, or you can read someone like an open book. Today I want to compare people to a specific type of book, namely sacred texts. Now we usually think about sacred texts as things like the Bible or the Quran or the Bhagavad Gita or even a poem or a letter or an essay that has meant a great deal to us. I want to push us a little farther today and encourage us to think about people as sacred texts for a number of different reasons. First of all, sacred texts are intertwined with the dual concepts of revelation and reception. That is to say that they have their provenance elsewhere they transcend that distance, they are revealed to us, and we in turn receive them, drinking from them deeply. This can happen in a number of different ways. There are some texts that are passed down from generation to generation until they are revealed to us, we receive them, and then we in turn pass them on to others. At the same time, there are other sacred texts that are revealed to us directly from a source that we perceive to be divine and holy in nature. It's the same thing about people, that we have the possibility of receiving people when they reveal themselves to us, that we can hear what people have to offer, to hear out their stories, and to listen to the narratives that they have woven out of the events in their own lives. When we do this, we can really approach people in a different sort of way, that we really are able to see the core of who they are um, in a way that transcends, again, the distance that often separates us from others. In addition, sacred texts often typically require translation. Now I want to concede for a moment that there is a certain power to the mystery of encountering a text in a language that we may not understand. This is a power that's embraced when we recognize that a text in a foreign language allows us to project our own understanding of that text onto it, that we can approach the text and kind of know, generally speaking, what this text is trying to communicate to us. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, we are taking our own understanding and engaging in the process of eisegesis. We are reading our own selves into this text. We think about this in the context of foreign language texts, but when it comes down to it, we also do the same thing with texts in our own language, in our own native tongues that when we engage a text in our own native tongue, the text begs us at its foundation to examine where does it come from? Who composed it and why? What is the journey that led this text from its origin to us and what is the purpose that it is supposed to serve in our own lives? It's the same thing with people as well. Each of us has his or her own idiolect. Each of us speaks with his or her own nuances and subtleties in a way that ultimately is very difficult to convey to anyone else. This is important to acknowledge because we often feel like we're speaking the same language when in reality we are speaking our own language in and of ourselves. By acknowledging this and recognizing it, we can help to minimize confusion and help to reduce the possibility for misunderstanding that separates people from each other. By affirming people as sacred texts and accepting revelation um, and uh, reception and translation as being at the core of how we encounter each other, we then take on certain obligations. As much as we would like to when we encounter texts or people that confound us or disturb us or that we see as sacrilegious, we cannot dismiss them. Instead, we're required to recognize and proceed from the assumption that there is holiness and reason behind them. It requires us to accept certain things about them and to ask questions. It requires us to ask, why does this person think this way? Or why is she acting that way? Or ultimately, why does this text make me feel uncomfortable? The idea of looking at people as sacred text is at its core something that, that may be unfamiliar to us. This may be something that we are not typically doing, but when we look at texts, we, we hold up texts in a very particular way, that we see them and when people desecrate them or defile them, it naturally upsets us. 
I would suggest that it should upset us no less when we see a person demeaned or diminished or worse. People are sacred texts, and by accepting this, we have the possibility of welcoming them into our lives and welcoming their stories into who we are and creating a very different world from the one in which we live. Thank you for coming this afternoon, and have a wonderful afternoon.